Hey, what is up YouTube? Uh, we are back. So if you saw the last video, you noticed that we pulled the engine out. Um, if you guys want to check out the last video, I went over what you got to do as far as the wiring, what you got to prep, what you got to label, what you got to mark, um, what you got to do to prep the engine to pull out, transmission to pull out, all that stuff. Go ahead and check out the other video if you guys want that. But as of now, the engine is out. So on this video, I'm going to go over the harness. As you can see, we pulled out a lot of crap. Some of this was aftermarket stuff. Like I'm pretty sure this crap here was aftermarket. It looks like even though it's got a red cable on it, this was attached to chassis ground and it looks like it was grounding all these wires. Most of these were going to the Dakota digital gauges, which it has installed, but they weren't really working. Um, you can see pull out the sensor that went to the transmission for the gauges. This is the cable here that came stock. This is what turns your, um, uh, this part on this side, no, actually this part here goes into your back of your instrument cluster. That cable spins. It's spun on this side by the transmission, and that tells you how fast you're going. That's how your speedometer works. On these older vehicles, there was a ton of wiring harness that we cut out. For example, this was for all the air conditioning stuff. It does not have the AC unit in there. doesn't have any AC parts at all, so we go ahead and rip that out. Uh, a lot of this stuff right here was for emissions. You can see some of this stuff was for like the EVAT valves, different stuff. We ripped that off. So let me show you how to figure out what you are going to keep. Now, if you look in here, this is the main harness where it connects to on the firewall. And you have a left side and a right side. This here is for the right side and this is for the left side. Now, the right side attaches here and then the left side. Now, this is as we're looking at it. Obviously, if you're talking about left and right usually people do it from where you sit in the car but i'm talking about as i look at the harness right now this side on this side the left side here this will be your engine side this is the one we're worried about this over here on this side the right side we're not going to touch that because that is usually for your body stuff so for example like your headlights turn signals um parking lights all that stuff uh your horn and stuff all that stuff usually comes from the right side harness your left side is what has all your sensors, coolant temp, oil pressure, brake switch, stuff like that. So when we look at our harness, this is what we're gonna focus on here. Now, if you look at your harness, you can easily tell that there's some big, thick, fat cables, right? If you ever see a fat cable, that is an important cable. So you see we have one red one here, two red ones here. These red ones, remember we followed them back to the starter, let me grab the end of the harness here. Come on, baby. All right. So these ended up being these wires here. Those two red wires are here to a fusible link. See how you had that fat connector there? That was the one that went to the battery cable. Follow me over here. So this was a positive of the battery cable. This was a battery cable here. So the battery set here it had the 12 volt fat cable that went to your starter those wires up there they connected to the same post on the starter to get battery power from this post here so instead of running that cable all the way to the battery they just ran it all the way to the starter this starter cable here this big fat one has enough juice or is thick enough to support enough juice for the starter and to power up everything in there so that's why they do it that way now the other wire that we have to focus on, this applies to every single swap. It's gonna be your starter wire, which on most Chevy vehicles, it's gonna be this purple wire here. So this purple wire, again, we're looking at the left side of the um, firewall connector. That purple wire, you can see how thick it is. It's usually gonna be 12 gauge, maybe 14 gauge. That purple wire ended up going to the small posts on the starter. So that one, when this gets 12 volts, your starter gonna crank over. And as long as you have power going to your big fat post, your engine will start cranking over. Now remember guys, this is completely separate from your LS engine as far as control wise. Your ECU, your harness, whatever you use to control your engine has nothing to do with the cranking part of the wiring. That's all from here, right? So if you hook this up to your engine and you have no computer, no uh, injectors, nothing else hooked up to your engine, just this, your engine will crank, all right? I want you guys to make sure you understand that because some people get confused on that. Some people think 
that this starting circuit is part of your computer. It's not, it's not, it has nothing to do with it. All right, so now uh, if you remember watching the other video, there should be some wires that you guys labeled for your coolant temp, for your oil pressure, for your, um, what do you call it, uh, tag signal. Those wires, you're gonna label them if you're running the OEM gauges. Now we're not, we're gonna switch over to Dakota Digital Gauges. So we don't need those wires at all. So all these wires here that are for like sensors and stuff, we're gonna trace all those all the way back here and pull them out here. So we're gonna push them in here, push them in, pull them out, get rid of them. The only wires that I'm keeping because I am running the code digital gauges and a different module to give me the input for the gauges is I'm keeping this purple wire for sure. These two red wires here. And you can see we have a pink wire here, right? The pink wire is usually, especially on GM vehicles, the pink wire is usually key on cranking power. Now, I'm gonna keep that wire because it's nice and thick. So obviously the red wires are giving power in there. Once that key turns on, that pink wire should have power coming out this way. So I'm gonna use this just for like a trigger. Anytime I need key on power for my fan relays, for example, um, anything that needs key on power over here on this side of the firewall, I'm gonna tap into this pink wire here because it's nice and thick. As long as I'm like, I'm not gonna hook up my fans directly to it. I'm gonna hook up my relay to this to turn on my fans or power up my relays. <coughs> and then my ECU is gonna ground that relay, give power to my fans. All right, there's other wires here. Usually green wires are for sensors. Usually the brown wire like this one here is gonna be for your um, uh, fuel level on your fuel tank. Now if we have this brown wire here and if it actually runs all the way to the back and your fuel level gauge was working, definitely leave this one plugged in because then on the inside, we're gonna tap into that to run into our gauges for our fuel level. Uh, what else do we got here? That should be it. So we're getting rid of this one. I'm sorry, we might keep that one. We'll see if it works. We're gonna get rid of these green ones, green, white, this little small brown one. And that's it. We're gonna keep these four fat wires, purple, two reds, and a pink. We're keeping those and the brown wire for our um, fuel level tank. And that should be it as far as wiring. Um, you have other little wires, like we have one coming down here for your brake switch. Um, that one's only gonna work if you hook it up to your Dakota Digital Gauges or whatever gauges. If you already had the stock gauges on there, just leave that one plugged in. You should be fine. So a quick tip, just like I mentioned, um, don't ever assume that just because the color of the wire, it's gonna dictate what it's for. For example, you saw here that this is a red wire. Red wire, 99% of the time means 12 volt constant, but whoever used this red wire hooked it up straight to the frame for a ground, and then they grounded all these wires. Now, you can see it's just a bus, right? So you could actually run this fat wire here to 12 volts, and then it'll give all these different ones 12 volts. But whoever did this said, hey, you know what? I need a good ground, so let's go ahead and do it that way. Kind of weird. But just a heads up, guys, especially if a car's old, used vehicle, uh, some people might have messed with the wiring, the harness, so don't always take it for granted that this wire means this. And be careful what wires you tap into. You don't wanna tap into like, let's say we have this skinny ass uh, green wire here. Let's say we get 12 volts here with the key on. You don't wanna tap into a bunch of stuff into this wire because you're gonna fry this wire and possibly pull too much amperage and burn the fuse or fry whatever it goes to. So you wanna be uh, cognizant of that. Other than that guy, that's pretty much it for the wiring. As far as prepping it, pulling the wires out, getting it ready. Now in the next video, we're gonna start cleaning up the firewall, probably throw some paint here so we don't rust anything. Actually, one more thing I wanna bring up since we're talking about wiring. Um, one thing I like to do is run new battery cables. So this looks like it's a four gauge wire. I'm gonna run usually between like a zero one gauge to like a two gauge wire from the battery to the starter. Cause I wanna make sure everything has plenty of power. Now, whatever size you run on your positive size, so let's say you run a one gauge wire from your positive battery to your starter, run a one gauge wire from your negative to the block of your engine. Then after that, I usually do ground wire one gauge from here to the block, from the block to the frame, 
I'll do another one gauge wire. You can do two gauge, it's fine. And then you can see this ground strap here. You should also run from your engine to the body or from the battery to the body. Cause that way, no matter where you're at on the vehicle, if you ground to the frame or to anything metal, you will have a good ground. So you guys wanna make sure you do that because a lot of the issues I see are usually ground issues where you have a bad ground, a lousy ground, and you just don't get the right voltage to whatever sensor or component you're trying to power up. All right, guys, so I'm gonna leave you guys on this video and on the next video, we're gonna start running the harness for Terminator X. I'm gonna show you guys how I add a fuse box to that and a relay to completely separate all my new stuff from the stock wiring because this wiring is over 40 years old now and I don't wanna add extra load to it. So I'd rather just use one of these wires to trigger a new relay that gets power from the battery on my Keon and then powers up an entire new fuse box. It's not hard to do guys, but it will save you guys headaches down the road and your swap is gonna be a lot more dependable when it comes time for you to use it on like as a daily driver. So this is the engine side of the harness and I'm gonna show you which wires I'm gonna deep in. Like I said, obviously we're keeping the purple wire, that's our starter wire. These two red wires here, we're gonna keep them because these are the ones that feed power into our fuse box. If we get rid of these or don't hook them up, then we're not gonna have power coming out of here. We're not gonna have power going nowhere. So we need to hook these back up to the battery. I have this pink wire here. That's probably a key on cranking power. So for now, I'm gonna keep this. I could do this. It is a pretty fat cable, but I could use this to um, have key on power to my relays for my fans, um, anything else that I hook up that's external that I wanted only to come on with the key on, I could use this wire for that because as big as it is, usually on the fan or usually on the relays for any other fan or anything, even if it's a 30 amp relay, the trigger side, the control side, that's usually a low amp circuit. So it only, it only usually pulls like one amp. So this is plenty of thickness for it, assuming we have 12 volts key on power, which we're gonna check. Now the rest of these, like I mentioned before, um, this brown one is probably for the fuel level, but we have the core digital gauges that we're gonna run, so we're not worried about that. This green one is probably gonna be for either our oil pressure or cooling. We have two green ones, so they're both sensors. And then this other brown one here, this one might be for our brake switch, which we don't really care about, because we're not gonna hook it up to our Dakota Dash. So all these small wires I'm gonna get rid of, all these fat wires I'm gonna keep. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull one out and show you how it stays in there. Let me show you the light real quick so that we can see what they look like in there. All right, so on our setup, we have to unhook this clip right here. This actually holds the wires in place. It keeps them from sliding out. You can see how it clips in there. So you have to basically pull this tab up here. Same thing on the other side, pull this tab up here, up. And then these two, push these two down. And you could get you could get to this tab here by going in through here and then prying it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and depend the wires that I told you we weren't gonna keep, and then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. All right, guys, so I pull out one of the wires just to show you guys what it looks like. Now, when you look inside the harness, you can see there's a little bit of a tab right above each pin. Let me see if I could show you guys while I'm holding the flashlight. So like right, like on, like if we're to try to pull out this wire here, right here and here, there's like a little slot right above it. I don't know if you can see that. The wire is sitting in like this. So if you look, see if my thing focuses. If you look, you see a little tab sticking out right, right there, here. That tab, you gotta stick a screwdriver in this way and push it down. Dang it, focus on my hand and push that down and then like that. You see, you push it down and then you can pull the wire out. All right, guys. But one more thing before I leave, if you are not sure if you need the, the wire or not, do not remove it, leave it there, finish up your yellow swap. After you're done with your yellow swap, then you can say, hey, you know what? I never hooked up this wire, I can get rid of it. I never hooked up this wire, I can get rid of it. I never hooked up this wire, I can get rid of it. So wait till you're done with your yellow swap if you are not sure which wires to depend. If you do, um, are familiar with wiring, look up a schematic, figure out which wires you need, which wires you don't need, remove the ones you don't need, and then continue with your project. 
Uh, as always, guys, if you guys need help on your other swap, subscribe to my Instagram. I will help you guys out one-on-one. -on -one, and I will catch you guys in the next video, but this time for reals. See you guys.